This is a micro hiker from CKC Knives, Kylie Harris. There's a couple of comments that I want to make uh, about this knife. If you haven't checked out knives like this, they're kind of interesting because they're designed to be held in hand. You can see the actual butt end of the knife is in your hand. And this makes the grips a lot more versatile in many respects because you can see if the handle was outside of your hand, you can't actually hold it at angles like this because the handle of course is constrained by heating against your palm. Uh, Kali calls these micro knives. Udo also makes them. And Udo was the guy that uh, I first saw popularize these knives. Other people had made them but Udo does it as a large part of what he does and he calls them palm or finger knives. And this is an example from Udo which has a very sort of Fred Perrin style handle where you have the very deep uh, index finger uh, cut out and it's a very unique handle which is made from epoxy based uh, cord wrap. So it's a cord wrap with multiple layers of epoxy which is buffed and as I've said numerous times this looks very slick and feels uh, on first contact when you pick it up that it would be very slick but it's not a uh, slippery type handle um, at all. Uh, they come normally with a standard uh, single bevel partial height grind. I fully flatten this. But that's that interesting uh, little knife. Kali has shaped his handle and his knife for a number of grips that you can see all based around the fact that this is sort of a palm knife. So you have cutouts right here in the handle for a pinch. You have basically a full index uh, printing for your thumb right here and again for your index finger. Now. Uh, the interesting thing about this, or a point that I want to make, is that very recently I've been doing uh, edge retention comparisons, because both this and Udo's knife are actually in 01, at a very similar hardness, different hardening by different manufacturers. And just trying to learn a bit about, again, about steels and that in regards to edge holding. And what I've found is that uh, burr minimization is a lot more critical than I previously thought. Now, I knew, and most people know, is that once you sharpen a knife initially, or you shape it, for example, you get it to come to an apex. If there is a visible burr, you have to remove that before you sharpen. If you don't, the edge retention is likely to be quite poor. And this is because the steel, even under the part that's burred, is still damaged. Because the burr that you see is just a steel that weakened that it's just collapsed. It can't hold and take that basically triangular taper and it just collapsed at the very edge. And that's the visible burr that you see. But of course you stop seeing burrs once they get to be around 20 to 40 microns. That's at about the ability that most people can actually see. But I found even if you can't see them, even if they're below that 20 to 40 microns level, if you just go ahead and apply a micro bevel, the edge will end up sharp. Uh, it will initially seem to cut relatively well, but the edges can often prematurely collapse very quickly. So what I found is that what I do from this point on is that even if after I've shaped the edge and I do a test cut on newsprint, it doesn't appear to have a burr, doesn't look like it, doesn't feel like it, I still do burr minimization steps, which means I raise the angle of the knife on the stone, I cross the grit patterns on the stone, I grow ultra light, and then I back off. I do that even if I don't see a burr, even if I don't feel a burr, even if there doesn't appear to be one on paper. And what it does is it prevents the possibility of there being a microscopic burr on the edge and you forming that micro bevel on that microscopic burr. Because if you do that, the edge retention will be very low. It can be like one tenth of what the edge retention should be. Now of course the ideal way to absolutely be sure is you just look at the knife edge under magnification. Anywhere from 10 to 50 times magnification is easily enough. And if you see the edge form very clearly you say okay okay I know there's no burr. You check it on both sides. It looks perfectly clean. You make a test cut. It appears to be sharp. Well there's no burr. But you, I don't always carry around loops and magnifiers with me. So what I've started doing is again doing a burr minimization step or a series of them even in the cases that there doesn't look to be a burr there doesn't feel to be a burr on paper and what I found is that has greatly reduced those times where I would get premature edge collapse.
which I've now attributed to the fact that there was a microscopic burr on the edge, which caused the edge to prematurely collapse. So it's an interesting thing. So if you are seeing poor edge retention, especially poor edge retention sort of uh, on an infrequent basis, one of the things I would suggest is after you've finished shaping the edge, but before you put on the micro bevel or before you put on your final edge, do a series of burr minimization steps and you're very likely to see increases in edge retention, significant ones.